cool. So yeah, thanks for joining everyone. Um, today I'm going to be going over um, fast AI, which is just like a sort of a quick and easy um, uh, wrapper uh, AI trainer in Python. Um, it's an API that you can use to train um, image classification, natural language processing, a whole bunch of things. So it's pretty cool. Um, just a bit of housekeeping, a bit of prereq um, is required. So if anyone who's downloaded the Python uh, notebook, um, you can get it. If you haven't already, you can just jump over to the SIG Python channel um, and there's a link in there for the link to this um, uh, Python notebook, which you can use. Um, another thing as well is that um, there's a bit of um, a bit of Python expected, but I'll try and go over it and um, hopefully, you know, I'd, if you've got any questions, just, just jump in at any time. Cool, so let's um, let's get started. First things first, um, if you've got this open, um, you're gonna be inside a Google Collaboratory Notebook. Um, and the Google Collaboratory Notebook, for those of you who don't know what notebooks are, um, they're just sort of playgrounds of um, generally Python code where you can mix in Markdown and Python code um, just sort of play around with things. Um, in data science, we generally use um, uh, notebooks like these just because we're not engineering code, we're just sort of experimenting with stuff. So um, that's why notebooks are generally just in case anyone's aware of them. Um, whoever's typing, you mind just muting just because it's quite loud? Yeah, that was me, sorry. Uh, that's all good, thanks. Cool, so um, if you've got this uh, open, um, you just want to make sure that you've connected to a runtime and that's just going to allocate you basically sort of like a, a similar to an a, um, AWS instance. Um, it's just a, it runs on the... Google Cloud Platform instead. And just make sure you're signed into your personal Google Work account. Um, the only reason for that is that we don't have a Google Drive um, and under your REA account. So um, yeah, you're just gonna make sure that, um, it's not that we're saving anything to your Google Drive, it just requires it for, for these um, Google Collaboratory Notebooks. All right, so prerequisite is that in um, data science and especially for computer vision training, we need a GPU to work with. Oh, didn't mean to open up. Up that. So um, you should all be able to have a computer vision, uh, sorry, a GPU um, uh, allocated, but just to double check, if you go to runtime and change runtime type, just make sure that you've got a hardware accelerator GPU set here. Um, there's obviously ins and outs as to why we use GPUs, but I'm not gonna be going too much into details as to the conceptual stuff with AI in this workshop. Um, inside these um, notebooks, you can just click on a cell. These are called cells um, and they just basically contain the code. And this here is just gonna install um, fast AI for you on your instance and just set up everything up and running. Also need JQ as well, because we'll, we'll need that. Um, so if you, you can either hit play here or press command enter or control enter if you're on uh, Windows. Um, it'll say that this notebook's not authored by Google. No, it was authored by me. Um, it's from GitHub. You can review. I'm not saving anything to your personal drives or anything. I'm not looking at anything. So, you know, it's 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 totally fine to run. Um, again, if you're not comfortable with running it on your own machine, you can just follow along and watch it on, um, watch it on the screen. So it's going to start executing a whole bunch of um, commands here. Um, in Python, in the collaboratory notebook, if you prefix anything with an exclamation mark, it actually runs a shell command. So that's why we're running pip install over here. And then anything without the exclamation mark is um, basically Python code. So it's going to import this thing called Fastbook, which is sort of the fast AI tutorial book. Um, fast AI have a very extensive course if you're more interested in this, which I highly suggest going through. It's where I learned how to do most of this stuff as well. Um, so whilst that is running, um, next thing we're going to have to do is get some images. Um, so machine learning models, they, they learn, especially for computer vision, um, they learn from a whole bunch of training examples. So this is just uh, downloading over here. Um, uh, they use a whole bunch of training examples, um, which you'll need to um, basically get a whole bunch of images. And we can use the Creative Commons API to scrape images off the internet. Um, it's pretty um, you know, there's a whole bunch of different ideas here, um, art movements. So for example, if we want to train a computer vision model, um, for those of you who aren't really aware of what a computer vision model is, um, sort of think of it like a, a program, except instead of coding your program, you're actually passing it to data to learn something. So as an example, um, you can see here for like artwork, um, if we, we, it's pretty difficult. So this is a impressionist artwork over here as an example. We've got cubism artwork over here, pop artwork over here. So imagine, imagine thinking about writing code to train a computer to 
recognize between this. It'd be pretty basically impossible to, to write some code to do that. And that's why a machine learning model um, learns from data. It learns from instances of all these different types of things. And it will um, use a neural network to understand the differences between different categories. Um, just one thing to note as well, when this top one has finished running, it's going to ask you to go to this URL in the browser. Um, all this URL is, is just going to authorize the application to work on your computer. So just uh, go into this, copy this code over here, just paste it in there, hit enter, and that'll just allow FastAI to start working and you, everything's good to go. Just to double check, you should see a little check um, over here and how long it took to execute. So that check mark means that that cell has successfully executed and it took two minutes to run. So yeah, just going back over here, um, feel free to change it to anything you want. Um, we're gonna go through this code in a second, but on line 17, that's where we actually pass in the labels that we wanna train on. So I'm gonna use the example of, you know, that different type of artwork, just cause that's quite a, a challenging piece, but by all means, you know, you could chain different dog breeds or ice cream flavors or whatever you want to do. It's totally up to you. Um, so I'll go through this line by line just to, to explain what's going on. Uh, first thing over here, um, we're just going to import the path library um, just so we can, you know, have somewhere to download all of our contents to. And in case you're wondering, it's just downloading into the instance file system, which you can see over here. So it's nothing special. It's not going into your own personal Google Drive or anything. Um, and what we're going to do, uh, if you don't, if you don't see these line numbers on the left hand side, just hit over to I think it's uh, Tools Settings, and then in Editor, and then you just want to make sure Show Line Numbers is there, just because I refer to a couple of line numbers, so you don't have to count down. So first things first, we're going to set where we're going to download all of this data from. So we're going to go to Creative Commons. We're going to download a whole bunch of images, and it's going to be put somewhere on our computer. Um, so I've designated this to, you know, root file system forward slash data sets. Seems pretty simple. Um, and we're just going to dump all our images in there. Um, we can run, like I said before, we can run shell commands um, just by prefixing an exclamation mark. Again, it's not like we're engineering code here. We're just playing around. This is sort of the difference between data science and sort of maybe data engineering, I guess, is we're just playing around with stuff. It doesn't need to be fancy. We don't need to, you know, import the proper Python libraries to do this. So we can just um, exclamation mark, remove, um, remove the whole directory just to make sure we're starting off on a clean slate. Uh, this next line, number of images per label, we're gonna download 200 images of impressionist, impressionism art, 200 images of the cubism art, and then 200 images of pop art or whatever labels you're putting in there. Again, you can update this, you know, if I wanted to add in an additional artwork, it could be, you know, anything else, just if you're doing dog breeds or something, um, by all means, just add in different breeds that you can think of there. Um, and the maximum for the API is 200, uh, sorry, the maximum is 500, but generally 200 is fine. Uh, you can also request the image quality size from Creative Commons. So medium, that would be medium size image, but you can play around with small, medium, large. Um, I've sort of designed this notebook so that you can, guys can play around with stuff um, just to see how things might change down, down the track. Um, and the next thing we're doing is we're just going to go through each of these labels um, and we're going to create a subdirectory under that data sets directory. So basically we should see something like, you know, forward slash data sets, forward slash impressionism and so on and so forth for, you know, cubism and pop art, you know, doesn't really matter. Um, and then we're just going to make sure that that's a clean directory too. One cool thing is that you can reference um, local variables. So there's a local variable labeled data set directory. And it just it just knows that, that that variable now exists inside the shell environment. So you can just, you know, you can just copy that there. Um, and then this variable over here, when Creative Commons, the API gets hit, it's just going to save all of the result image, uh, result URLs for all of the images we want inside uh, this text file. Um, so that's the actual request over there. And you can see uh, there's a curl command. It's got an authorization token. That token's just directly from the tutorial on Creative Commons' website. So you don't really have to create your own one. Um, and then we're just going to pass it through to JQ. Um, for those of you who might not know what JQ is, it's just a JSON parser because we get a big blob of JSON text back. We're going to go through all the result um, that we get back and then just get all of the URLs and then dump that to a file. Um, and then once we've got all of those URLs, we'll run WebGet. I generally use WebGet to just download single instances of images. You could use curl here, it doesn't really, really matter. 
Um, and then we're just going to download all of those images um, into subdirectories. So for example, we might have data sets, um, impressionism, and then like image one.jpg, and then image two, image three, doesn't really matter. Um, it's just going to download it all for us. So let's run this code. And you can see I've got some print line statements to help us follow along what's going on. It's requested 200 random images of impressionist um, images from Creative Commons. Boom, got 200, it just downloaded 200. 200 images of cubism. Now it's getting those requests down. You can see, you can follow along with the, what the code's actually doing. There's this little green cursor that's actually running through the um, what command's actually being run right now or what line of code we're up to. Sometimes it's a little bit slow. Um, I'm not sure why, but yeah, it can take it can take some take some time to, to actually download the the um, the images. But we'll just let that keep running, and I'll just jump down over here um, to this next cell. So what this cell is going to do um, is just sort of visualize what what did we actually download? Because you know it's one thing to request all these things. Um, Fast AI comes with a whole bunch of really helpful um, fu functions just to make life a little bit easier for you. Um, some of these functions wrap PyTorch for those who might not be familiar with PyTorch, that's sort of a high level production style um, um, machine learning framework. Um, but over here, we're going to um, use the following functions, get image files. So we just pass in a directory um, and it will just return all of the um, image files, JPEGs, PNGs, GIFs, whatever, um, into, into um, an array um, of paths. Um, load image will just return the image loaded into memory and then show images will show multiple images um, using a grid um, and it uses matplotlib for those of you who might not know what matplotlib is it's just a graphing library um, so over here you'll see that we see from fast ai dot vision dot all import star um, some python users over here might know that import star is a big no-no in python um, however fast ai the authors consider that um, when they've created these all packages, it does make the imports quite safe so that you can just have one call um, and it will just do everything for you and you don't have to worry about in importing individual packages and, and individual functions. So I'm gonna hit enter here just to see what we got. And you can see it's just gonna call get image files. It's gonna load in an image for, you know, randomized shuffled of five images and then just plot it Plot it down, and you can see here we've got you know some images of impressionist art, some images here of cubism, some images here of pop art. But you can also see that some images don't look too right. Like this might not be considered pop art. That looks like a person who's reading a book. Um, and you know we can just keep rerunning it. So if I hit Control a command enter again, it'll just shuffle it through more impressionist artwork, more cubism artwork. Um, again just to sort of see what we've got. If this was on your local file system, you might just wanna, you know, look exactly, um, go to the directory and just see, see what's going on and, you know, load the images locally. Cool. So any questions so far or should we keep going? Everyone good? All right, awesome. Cool, so the next step, we're gonna load all of these images that we just downloaded into memory. Um, and so we'll, we're gonna just explain, I suppose, some foundational concepts about uh, training machine learning models. And that is when you wanna train a machine learning model, you really wanna make sure that you're trying to see how well it handles previously unseen data. So what I mean by that is that if I show you 50 images of a dog, um, I want you to try and learn what a dog generally looks like. And then I want to show you 10 different images of 10 different images of dogs and see how well it actually classifies whether it is or is not a dog. So for example, five of those images might be actually of dogs. And then five of those images might be of cats instead. Um, and ideally, it, if you've trained your model well, you should get 100% accuracy by saying, hey, those five images of dogs are actually dogs. And those five images of cats aren't dogs. Um, and that's what we, that's why we split these data sets. Uh, we split that big data set into two sub data sets. So we have a, a training data set that actually teaches the model what to look for. And then we have a validation data set. And that validation data set um, never gets seen inside um, the actual training process. It only gets seen after the 
training has been completed to assess just how accurate how how accurate the model has actually gone and how well it's actually um, un, you know how well it's actually learned things. So fast AI has this helper function image data loaders dot from folder. Um, and that helps us load these data sets into memory. So I'll go through what it means, um, you know, line by line over here. Oh yeah, by the way, if, if people aren't able, is everyone able to follow on CoLab? If people are stuck, by all means, just reach out. We should, we should have enough time to go through Q&A at the end as well. Cool. I think we'll treat, we, we'll treat silence as success. But um, silence as success, yeah. <laughs> Uh, shout out if anyone needs help, even if it's just on chat, then we'll see if we can help you out. Yeah, awesome. Um, cool. So um, first things first, we need to sort of prioritize how much of that big data set that we just downloaded, how much of that will be reserved for training, and then how much of that will be reserved for uh, validation. So over here, we've got 35%. That's what the number I've used, but you know, you might want to play around with that. Generally, I think generally, I think 20% is the default in fast AI. Um, so, you know, maybe at the end of this, you can play around and see what, what might happen if you change that value. The next thing we're going to do is we're just going to make sure all images are resized to a consistent, um, you know, consistent, you know, size. Um, and that's this resize function. Um, the resize function, all of these images, these functions, you're probably wondering where they might come from. They all got loaded in when we called this from fast AI import uh, dot vision dot all import style um, and memory between cells gets preserved. So that's why we know that data sets directory over here is actually you know, defined up here. So it's not like these are completely localized. It's kind of treated globally throughout the whole notebook, just a, an aside there. Um, so this resize function will go through every item it's got and it will resize it consistently to 256 by 256 pixels. Um, just the note, if you want to increase the resolution, you could increase it. That will, might increase the accuracy, but it's also going to cost you more um, com computation power and that will increase training time as well. So if you don't have the resources or you don't have the time to train something, um, that's generally why we like to just resize it to, you know, so that all images are consistent, consistent sizes. Cool. So that image data loaders from Boulder, that was that method that's uh, defined up here. And image data loaders is just a class that FastAI provides to help load in um, images um, into memory. Um, so the first parameter that we pass in is basically where is our data stored. Uh, we have that forward slash data sets directory and that's stored inside this data sets directory path over here. The next thing we're passing in is what vocabulary we want to train against. And you can see if you just hover over variables uh, Google Colab will actually tell you what that variable is at this current state. So you can see impressionism, cubis, cubism art, pop art. Um, and then uh, we want to provide in what um, validation percentage we want. So we, you know, we provide it over here, an amount of 20 uh, 35%. And then this last uh, parameter over here, item transformations. That's basically what transformations do you want to apply to each image? And there are a whole bunch of transformations you can do. Um, this one's probably just the simplest. And then all we're going to do is just print out uh, how many that we loaded into memory. So I'll hit control C here. And you can see that we've got uh, three labels over there. Impressionism, cubism art, pop, is, pop art as well. And it took a little while, but it loaded in all of those images into memory. So we have 129 images reserved for impressionism for training and then 71 for validation and so on and so forth for the rest of them. Um, is everyone right up to this stage? All good? Cool. Well, now let's actually get to the meat of it. And this is the part where we actually train the model. So fast AI has a bunch of pre-trained models that we can piggyback off. Um, and the concept of these pre-trained models, um, it can get quite academic and quite detailed, but basically a whole bunch of academic researchers, they've come up with these pre-existing architectures, an architecture and a model that kind of can be used interchangeably. If you go through the fast AI course, it tells you a little bit more about the differences between the two. Um, you know, they appeared in certain, you know, academic papers. So, you know, if you go over here, you can read more about the full architecture of you know, AlexNet, which is one of the first um, ones that came out. But again, this is very dense and detailed and we don't need to know about that really. Um, so all of these models 
already exist and they're known as pre-trained models. Um, so these pre-trained models are things that we can leverage um, to teach um, a AI classifier to learn something new. Um, and so if you expand, why do we use a base model? Basically what we're doing is we're specializing these pre-trained models to, um, for our specific purpose. So in this case, we've got a whole bunch of pre-trained models and we're gonna specialize them to use, um, to classify different pieces of artwork. Um, you can read this in your own time, but basically what it's doing is these models have learned what you know little gradients and edges are. And then from those gradients and edges, they've started to learn you know, different things about, you know, shapes and, you know, what a circle is and what a, what a, you know, what lines are and all these other things as well. And then you can see that some things like features, if I zoom in here, you can kind of see like the AI is starting to learn what people's faces look like. This visualization is actually a visualization of AlexNet, which is a, another AI uh, pre-trained model as well. And then over here, pictures of dogs, it starts to really classify and then understanding between the differences between different dog breeds and so on and so forth. So really um, this quote over here summarizes, summarizes it. These pre-trained models, for example, AlexNet, oops, I didn't mean to double click that. Just get out of this. Um, AlexNet over here was trained to six days simultaneously over two in GDA, blah, 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 um, over the data set of 15 million labeled high resolution images. So basically the reason why we're using these pre-trained models is though, so that we don't have to do that, right? Someone's already gone off, um, out in the wild. They've gone into download all of these images. Um, they've trained something on some pretty, you know, at the time, pretty hardcore GPUs over six days. And now all we need to do is leverage of that and say, hey, you know about all of these categories, but now I just want to teach you what these different types of artworks are. So, if you're not sure what a neural network is, um, you know, this over here, ResNet 18 says that it's got 18 different layers. And I don't wanna to go too much into the details because you don't really need to know too much about it. But when you're calling this fine tune method, that's basically specializing the very last layer for your specific purpose. Um, cool. So let's actually train the model. So this part here, ResNet 34, it just, you might thinking, where does this guy come from? It just looks like, it's a global variable. Again, this has just been imported from that um, imported from that um, AI import star, the wildcard thing, wildcard um, thing. And then um, we'll sign that to this thing called pre-train model. We have another variable here, number of epochs. An epoch, just in summary, is basically how many times we're going to go through every single image in the training set before we repeat. Um, so by setting it to one, we're just going to go through every single training um, image just once. Um, you could set it to two or three or five or six, doesn't really matter, but the number of epochs will take longer, but it might be more accurate. Okay, now this part, CNN learner. Uh, a CNN is a convolutional neural network, it's the type of neural network. Um, and this helper function again comes from um, fast AI. You can see it's got a whole bunch of different parameters here, but for simplicity's sake, we're passing in over here. Uh, data loader, that data loader is just a variable that we assigned up here. And that's loaded in all of our data into a specific um, specific class called a data loaders instance. Um, then we're passing in what pre-trained model we wanna use. So for example, I'm gonna use ResNet 34, but you know you might wanna use AlexNet or SqueezeNet or I don't know, any of these other ones. Um, you know, just play around and see what the differences might be. And then lastly, we're going to report some metrics. And here we're going to report accuracy. Um, in data science, accuracy is really just reporting back here the number of correct predictions that the, the model made um, versus you know, incorrect predictions. And then over here, line 16, we just basically, we've defined this learner. Um, that's just you know, the instance that we just call fine tune. And fine tune is really just going to yeah, fine tune that last layer in the pre-train in that pre-trained model for our specific purpose. Um, so if I hit play now, you can see it's downloaded the model. The model exists on PyTorch's website and it's training the model with one epoch. And that's it. We're training a neural network right now. It's taking, it's taking a couple seconds. It's going through epoch number zero. And it's just doing it again. And so you can see we're currently sitting about 64% accuracy. So, you know, the accuracy is not great, but it's, you know, better than 50-50. And we'll let it run through a second epoch. So it's zero-based, zero so we'll go through 
0, 1. And there you go, we're at 70% accuracy. So again, not the best neural network, especially for a very complex task like distinguishing between different artworks, but it's gotten at 70% right. So what we're going to do now is actually interpret what it learned correctly and what it didn't learn correctly. So they had uh, fast AI provides this thing called a classification interpretation class. Um, sounds you know quite over the top, but basically all it's saying is we want to interpret what a specific learner, CNN learner has learned. Um, and to do this, uh, we can visualize a confusion matrix and produce uh, what's called the top losses. Uh, in general, the higher the loss, I'm not going to go into details here, but the higher the loss, the lower the model is confident in its result. So if I hit run now, um, I'll tell you what a confusion matrix is once you see it. But you can see here, um, these are the actual prediction, uh, the actual uh, ground truths as we like to call them, and then the predicted, what the model predicted. So you can see here, um, this diagonal is, if we, if we had like 100% on this diagonal, that would be great because that would mean that the actual values of cubism, the actual images of cubism art were correctly predicted as cubism art. But unfortunately the model isn't perfect. So for example, um, it predicted 29 instances of pop art that were actually cubism art. So if you're doing this with different dog breeds and such, you might be able to see that, you know, a chihuahua was confused as a pug, for example. And just down here, you, we can see certain instances of what it got confused on. So over here, we'll see the prediction. Over here, we see what it actually was and then the probability of that. So this one over here, this was predicted as pop art, but for some reason it was labeled as impressionism. So we'll get down to an important concept later on. And that's about cleaning our data set because really this is, an, this is not impressionist artwork. I mean, I'm not, I'm not an art expert in art. I just chose this example because it's kind of challenging for an AI model to you know, detect. But we can see it's, it's, that doesn't really look, that looks more, that looks like a Microsoft Paint drawing or something. Um, so yeah, you can, you can see over here that it's not perfect, um, but it's 70% it's, you know, accurate. It's not too bad. And the next thing we're going to do, I'm just going to show you how we're going to run some predictions. So here are some examples over here. If I just uh, command click, it should open it up in a, maybe not, command click. I'll just go to the copy the URL and chuck it in over here. So that, that's an image of a pug, which I just Googled pug pop art. So this should definitely be sort of a pop up instance um, over here. I don't even know, this might be like more impressionist art or something. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through each of these images, one, two, three. Um, and for every image, we're just going to make a temporary file to download the image into. We can use webget again, just again, using that exclamation mark, just to run a shell command. We don't need to be perfect here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to call this prediction, this learner.predict. Um, it does return that the first parameter it will return is basically the most accurate or the most highly predicted value. Um, the second one, at, uh, second parameter here is uh, the uh, number of instances or the classes that that particular prediction goes into. I won't go into details. And then the third one here is just basically the, all of the predictions that it comes back. Um, you can get the vocabulary from the uh, data loader that will just basically return the different classes that we have, the different labels. So if I run that, you can see the first image over here, look at that 98.693% uh, accurate that that pug was pop art. This one it also thought was pop art. So it wasn't really that great, but it was a bit more confident that it was impressionism. And then this one, it really wasn't that confident about anything. So I can't really remember what was this image. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah, another dog. <laughs> so if you're doing this with dog breeds, maybe it might be a bit more concrete. Um, so if you're checking if it's a pug versus a chihuahua versus a, a beagle or Shiba Inu, um, maybe your results are more accurate than my ones just because this art classifier, you know, classifying different types of art can be a bit tricky. Um, how is everyone? Um, am I going too fast? 
too slow. Yep, all good. Awesome. All right. Now we come to the step where we're cleaning up bad training data. Um, you know, as, as we can see over here, this was labeled as impressionist artwork. And when we ran through some of the stuff up here, you know, we might not necessarily be having the best training examples that we're teaching our model to do. So, you know, over here, for example, that's a photograph of the statue. That shouldn't, that should not exist in our data set, right? Um, over here, not, again, another photograph of some buildings. So, you know, we've got bad, we've got bad training data, which is why, probably why our model isn't that accurate, maybe why it's at 70%. So if anyone here knows Glenn Bunker or Bunks, um, he's favorite, one of my favorite quotes that he said is shit in means shit out. So if we're training a model with bad data, it's not going to be that, you know, its accuracy is not going to be that great. Um, so what we can do with fast AI is import an image classifier cleaner. And this is just going to help us clean up instances of bad um, training samples. So what we do is we run this cell and it will be a sort of interactive cell, the result where we can click through and explore our data sets and, and see what's going on. So it's just going to load up and it's going to load up some HTML, some like HTML forms that we're going to play around with. Takes a little bit of a while. Um, and you can also play around with this max in, which just basically it's going to try and show 100 images per, per round. Um, and the reason why we need to sort of include this data set cleaner variable at the bottom is just so that um, if you don't, if you just have the assignment statement up here on line six, um, it's not actually going to execute the data set cleaner. Um, it's just going to make the assignment statement, but then actually just providing this data set cleaner down here will show this lovely, you know, array of a hundred different images that are on inside our, you know, our, our instance. So this is when we get, you know, the shit in means shit out. Let's, let's just get rid of the shit. <laughs> so over here, for example, this is our cubism art label, and this is our training data set. You can see here, we've got an image of a person holding a book. So what we can do is we can click on this and we want to mark this person, you know, this particular instance for deletion. So we'll hit delete there. Um, and then, you know, we might want to go through this over here. I mean, I'm not a perfect, I'm not, a, I'm not trained in art knowledge, but I, you know, maybe this isn't cubism art. So I might delete that too. Um, maybe this over here, this, this image might be more in um, pop art. So I can actually reclassify that as something else. And, you know, we can keep doing this over here. This might look like instead of cubism art, that look more, more like maybe impressionist artwork. Um, this is a photo of a, you know, an image of a, some sort of sculpture. So we'll, we'll delete that. You know, we can go on, you know, for a while by, you know, going through each of our, um, each of our training samples here. And then we might want to repeat the same for our validation data set too. Um, it is a little bit slow because it's trying to render 100 images you know, in one go. Um, so it's not the most efficient. But if you were on your own local machine, maybe you'll just manually do this by going into you know, the specific folder structure. Um, you know, over here, we can actually look at where it is. So over here, there's forward slash data sets. There's the URLs that we downloaded. And you know, if I go into cubism art, um, you, know, you might want to actually, just because Google Colab's not great at visualizing all this, you might want to just go through these manually on your file system and you know, manually delete them instead. But there is a way that we can do it inside, um, inside Google Colab instead. So once we've gone through all of these, you know, all of these samples where we want to clean up our validation data set, you know, we've also got duplicates over here. So, you know, that's another thing we want to keep out for. Um, good question. Cut the crap. Yeah, cut the crap. That's exactly right. Megan knows. Megan knows. Um, so yeah, we can go through all of this and you know do it for each of these different labels, but we don't really have time. I just wanted to sort of show what you can do. Um, what we can do next is run um, this data set cleaner, you know, variable that we created above. Um, it has this method called delete, and that's basically all of the instances um, of anything that we've marked as delete. So you know, if I do delete over here, delete over there, um, it basically updates this. Uh, variable to mark things as delete. Then what we're going to do is we're going to load the path to that image, um, basically go through the entire delete data set, find 
the if image and then unlink it, um, delete it from the file system. Uh, and similar for anything that has to be changed when we run reclassify them, we'll do the same thing. We'll go through everything. Um, and that, that over here will say what the new label should be. We want to move this particular image to a um, to you know data set directory forward slash label. So maybe it was pop art. We're going to move it from pop art to um, impressionist art or something. Um, and we can call yeah you know, shutil to make that move and done. You know you may, maybe you might want to do you know mv dollar sign image dollar sign move to instead if you don't want to use you know the Python way to do it. But you know that might not work, so I'm not going to run that. All right, now we'll hit run. And you can see I made those changes up there. That gets saved to our, um, they get saved into the instance of um, that data set cleaner. And, you know, we deleted some of those, some of those instances there. So I don't know if that actually worked 100% because I'm pretty sure I missed, I changed some images. Um, let's have a look if I do that. Should just be able to run it again and should just tell you. Oh, okay, now it's trying to change something that doesn't exist. Anyway, trying to get just go over the conceptual things over here. So we've we've cleaned up some examples, you know, some bad examples. So now why don't we retrain our model? So we'll go back to uh, step two over here. Oh, sorry, step three. Um, and what we're going to do now is just replay this cell and retrain it because it now has fewer examples of bad, you know, bad data. So we'll let that run. Thanks, Brett. Um, oh, data loader might need to, ah, okay. So that's one thing we have to do as well. We just need to reload in our data because it's, hasn't got um, those instances that we removed. So um, I don't know if that actually loaded. It was very quick. We'll try running it again. This should hopefully work. Any other questions? Because we're basically almost at the end. Are we using this in REA anywhere? I can pass over to Nick and Megan. <laughs> we are using the crap out of fast AI right now um, in the data science team. We're doing a lot on um, classifying and estimating quality of listing images. Stay tuned on Wednesday though, you'll hear a lot about that for RAIO. Yeah, there's gonna be some, some good hacks. Um, that's the reason why I wanted to run this through today in case anyone's got any ideas and wants to play around with it. Um, but look, we can see, uh, look, our model's actually gotten more improved. We deleted those bad samples and went from 70% now up to 72.115% accuracy. So, you know, just by deleting a few bad eggs, um, you get that 2% improvement. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, you know, again, we can rerun through the interpreter, see what it learned correctly, what it didn't learn correctly. Um, and yeah, like for some reason now, this particular Microsoft Paint style image, it's gone down uh, down the list of uh, loss. Again, that loss loss just means you know, the greater the loss, the uh, less confident the image uh, the learning classifier is. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically a rundown. Um, the last little bit is if you want to like export this model that you you know you want to put it in production or something. Um, there is a, you can get that model and save it to what we call a pickle file. Um, got the pickle Rick emoji, because why not? Um, and we'll, that basically serializes what we've learned into, you know, into plain text. So there we go, it's done. If I look into uh, my file system, just close up that. I don't know if you can see it. Oh yeah, my model.pkl. Um, I don't know if I can actually open this oh. download. Let's see, yeah, anyway. Um, so yeah, you can download, it's kind of like 
you can think of it almost like a, an exe, you know, executable file, but it's like an AI model instead. Um, and that has all the information that it's learned all of the things that it needs to learn for this particular example. And then, for example, you might be on a, a server or it might be on, on your phone or something. Um, you can import, you know, fast AI load and learner and then, you know, learner.predict some new image or you take a photo with your phone and upload it to a server or something like that. There we go, download, let's see. Oops, don't even know. Oh, yeah, what have I got? Don't even know what it was called. My model, oh, let's see, okay. cat, my model. This might be a bad idea. Oh yeah. <laughs> so there you go, there's our AI model. That's what it looks like. I mean, you'd get the same thing if you tried to, uh, I don't know, compile jar program or something. Okay, I'll just control C that. Um, but yeah, that that's, sorry, was someone? Sorry, the question is like, there, there is a, like pickle is a Python like object interchange format. So I wonder if it's just a like the oh, okay. dumped out. Yeah, there. That's, yeah. Oh, sorry, my bad. It's, it might be just that then. I I wasn't really aware. Of, I mean, I've only used pickle files for this purpose. Um, can you use pickle file? What else can you use pickle files for? Just anything really. I think any object you can oh, also awesome. about as a pickle. Okay. Well, I I just learned something new. <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, thanks, John. Um, the important thing to remember with pickle files is that they're essentially executable code. So you should never unpickle untrusted pickled content. Oh, there we go. Okay. Again, I'm, <laughs> I think, I think fast AI can export to different types of file formats too. Um, I'm not entirely sure if that's possible, but yeah, it's something you might want to play around with. Um, and that's it really. I mean, there's some additional funsies, some exercises, you know, what's the least amount of training images you can use to train a decent model, you know, maybe 50, maybe 10, maybe 20. Did anyone train anything fun or interesting they want to share? Did it work? I, I trained the dogs based on your example. Yep. Uh, it, it had good accuracy, mm -hmm. uh, but then when I looked at the images, most of them were rubbish. So I don't know what it was doing really. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it might like to some like a picture of the beach, and it's like that's well, all right. Accurately <laughs> classified as a dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, look, there's a lot of there's a lot of things. Like I've gone over a lot of um, important data science content here. That if you like, it's not just about this. Like their fast AI course, uh, they've got a tutorial over here, and you know, um, Nick, Megan, you can you can definitely you know go into more details. And I, I'm not actually a data scientist, so I'm I'm, I'm a software engineer. I'm just got interest in data science um but these tutorials and also like the you can just go to fast.ai um you go to the our mooc uh, you go to lessons lesson one and you know there, there's there are you know these videos are about you know an hour and a half each um and go into a lot more detail it's actually from a book they've got a, a, a textbook that's um quite detailed um i started reading you know i got about halfway through it um, but, you know, getting examples like the, you know, in classifying, a, oops, classifying a dog as um, a dog as, you know, a beach as a dog rather, um, you know, obviously it's not working 100% <laughs> and it probably, you probably need to look into the model and, you know, weave out those examples. But, you know, you might have some accuracy of something rather than, you know, nothing. So, yeah. I was certainly a lot more successful than when I tried to follow the Amazon, um, the Amazon provided, you know, uh, hands on one. The image, you know, in the um, Amazon recognition one. The, um, what's their, the, the yeah. Jupyter notebook one. Oh, oh, oh the SageMaker. SageMaker, oh, not, yeah. yeah. The more I trained, the more the accuracy went down on that, so. Interesting, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that's the other thing. I mean, you, you, I just use Google Colab here just because it was quick and easy to get people up and running. But yeah, here at REA, we, we use SageMaker. And, you know, it's um, another way of doing things. But yeah, um, hope you guys learned something. And if you've got any questions, just hit me up. I might stop sharing now. Will had Unless anyone's question. got questions. Sorry, yeah, maybe. I think Will had one in the chat. 
are the tools for classifying other types of data, e.g. audio, user input patterns? Oh, yeah. Will, sorry, yeah, I just saw your question now. Yeah. Um, Fast AI, yeah, it does have, let me just see if I can go back to the, the website. Um, yeah, Fast AI comes with a whole bunch of different, um, different types of data. So vision, vision is probably the easiest one for people to get into, but you can do natural language processing. Uh, you can do tabular, like um, for example, you know, you've got a whole bunch of rows and stuff, but on terms of the audio stuff, um, people have trained um, uh, audio based on the, what's it called? You know, the little wave graph of particular audio snippets. Um, they were able, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. They were able to train, train stuff just based on those. Like they basically got the image off that and trained it um, that way. There are also, oh, I had some notes somewhere. I don't actually have it on my computer, but they were also able to train like um, a... Uh, like uh, like injected malicious code into binary files by training what like basically visualizing what the binary file looked like and then detecting where chunks of malicious code were um the sort of creative thinking i yeah again i wish i had the images on here i'm not just google it fast ai malicious code yeah, example he was he mentioned it inside the 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 Horse guy mentioned it. I can't really find it now, but yeah, it was quite interesting. Like just to see how people, how can you can use computer vision to do? I think it might have been this one, maybe. Yeah, here we go. Um, so this is like a visualization of a of a particular. Um, I can't really remember it deeply, but like we have malware detection using deep learning, um, and yeah, trained these hot spots of where malicious code might be. Um, yeah, this is yeah, this is the audio example. So that's a siren, that's an iron, an engine idling, that's a dog bark. So if you can make something into a an image, then you can do anything with that image. Um, you know, yeah. As I've seen do. I've seen examples of people using the binary to image uh, conversion to detect like uh, entropy of or, you know out, encryption algorithms and things like that. Yeah. So you'd be able to, yeah, I guess, train what a, a bad encryption algorithm looks like. Yeah, definitely. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, there's other ones as well. Some people did like, um, I saw one recently of COVID, like detecting COVID lung. Um, they did it with fast AI. And like, you know, fast AI has only been around for, like it's only been around for a little while, but it's it's easy for people to dive into. Um, so, you know, there's a COVID positive patient, COVID negative patient, and they were able to train a classifier based on that. So, you know, for Hack Week, you know, REA I know next week, uh, if you've got an idea and you just want to play around with something, um, you know, check out, you know, hopefully you got something from the notebook, but if you've got questions, just reach out to, you know, myself or anyone else in the data science guild, really. I'm sure we'd be able to help you out. Um, but yeah, I think I'll call it a wrap there. Give you guys some time back. Has anyone got questions or are we all good? I just want to say thanks, Alex, Alex for, for um, I guess, a reasonably short notice, uh, bringing that together for us. No uh, worries. A fantastic, <laughs> um, fantastic demo. And um, uh, yeah, look, I'm, I'm keen to have a play now. I hope AI, I hope AI is not scary. Like that's that's the main message I was trying to bring across. It's not scary and spooky. It's it's quite easy to dive into. Just got to learn the basics and yeah check out that MOOC if you're more interested my tutorial is really high level so you know check out fast AI's tutorial it's quite good all right thanks and everyone else on the on the call here if there's a package in Python that you're uh, interested in or or use a lot or know things about that you feel like sharing um, reach out to me and we'll I'd love to have some some new presenters Beauty. All right. Thanks for having me, John. I think that's a wrap.